Alright, so before I flip the kayak over, I just want to show you the skid plate for my Pro Angler 14 that I make. And I do sell these. If anybody wants one, hit me up in the comments and we can go from there. But as you can see, it is a really thick piece of PVC that I formed to the front nose of the boat. It's a really tight fit going all the way around, which is what you want. And um, this is not easy to make. Whenever you heat the PVC, it actually creates these nasty bulges on the sides, and um, it's just a pain to get out. It does turn it yellow, which I still have some sanding to do right there to get the yellowness out. And, um, you know, the angle on each side isn't the same. So it's not perfect. I try to do my best. I try to eyeball it as best as I can, but, you know, it doesn't look like complete crap. Um, it does look pretty good, and I mean, honestly, who is actually going to see this? I don't know many people that store their kayaks upside down, so um, here it is. And it's actually held on by some 3M outdoor tape, two-sided tape. You just peel the red, red stuff off, and this one is actually going to be going on my kayak. This piece right here is the original test piece that I made, and you can see the uh, the bulges, those three bulges going along that I was talking about. Same thing on that side, it's got some, some bulging right there. But I mainly wanted to test out this tape to make sure it would hold on good enough. And um, you see those up and down marks right there. I actually had to uh, stab this thing quite a, quite a bit to actually um, get a bigger flathead screwdriver in to pop this off and it was stuck on there pretty good. Now the test piece I actually had on here for three months and um, there's the damage that it took from concrete boat ramps, rocky beaches, dirt, you know just running up on shores, stuff like that. It's got some pretty deep gouges right here at the nose where it took the most damage it does have a uh, pretty deep cut right there which is probably from a seashell or something and um, you know I didn't really sand this a whole lot because I really didn't care uh, the front of it looks like crap again because it was just a test piece just to make sure that this wouldn't fall off and um, I do fish more salt water than I do fresh water so it does handle you know either type of water well and um, the way it was stuck on here it you know it wasn't coming off anytime soon so um, I have sold quite a few of these locally and I did follow up with those people and they seem to really like it and as you can see there's a front there's a uh, a pretty deep gouge in the front nose of my kayak and it's just got scratches and scrapes going all along the front nose. So having something like this is definitely worth having. Um, it saves the front of your boat. It saves from any potential leaks, hitting stuff. So um, yeah, if you want one, just hit me up in the comments and we'll go from there. I also um, am making this, for, this is actually for somebody else, but um, I need to add some more tape, which I actually ran out of. But um, I do make these also, which these are a uh, a lot thinner. Which actually, I will um, so yeah. There you go. There, there's your comparison. You can see that the gray PVC is about three times as thick as the white, and um, you know the guy that's that's buying the uh, the white one just fishes freshwater, so. He just wants uh, something cheaper, which, I mean, I don't really charge a whole lot for these things anyway, for the time and effort that I put into them. But, uh, yeah, this is the same thing. It, uh, it's got a really nice tight fit going all the way around. And this actually, um, as you can see, is a whole lot more flexible. So it doesn't take, <coughs> excuse me, it doesn't take nearly as uh, much time to make, which I'll probably end up doing a video here shortly on how to how to make one of these it's really not that it's really not that hard and again you know I kinda eyeballed this one too it's kinda off you know right here but it it's fine 
so yeah, if anybody wants one of these, um, let me know in the comments and uh, we'll go from there. It's definitely a good thing to have. Alright, so the uh, camcorder died, so I have to use the GoPro, but um, there you go. You can see that the uh, skid plate has a nice tight fit going all the way around. No gaps, except for the thickness of the two-sided tape. And I uh, thought I would just show you what it looks like from a bird's eye view. So there you go. Alright, so this is the Pro Angler 14 that I fish out of, and I'll just do a setup video since it's uh, snowing outside. Um, I'll show you how I have it set up for fresh and saltwater fishing, and then I'll switch it over to how I have it set up for crabbing, because I actually hang a rig right off the side of the boat to run a 300 foot trot line, and I also carry some crab pots with me, so I will show you how I do that. And then I will show you um, how I hang a 50 pound thrust trolling motor off the side using the existing rod holders that are on there. And then um, at the end of the video I guess I'll show you how I set up my Revolution 13 also, which that's just super easy and simple. This is a lot more complicated than, uh, than that, so I'll just mainly stick with this, but I guess I'll start here at the back. I just have an old hunting shirt that I just ripped up and threw on there just so nobody will hit me whenever I throw it in the back of the truck. This is a Rubbermaid 68 quart cooler, and whenever I'm saltwater fishing, I normally carry a bigger one with me because I will keep a wide variety of saltwater fish, but in, in here, I... Uh, carry my Coleman bucket grill which the cooking grate is actually inside and um, you know grilling up some hamburgers or hot dogs or steaks or you know whatever is a whole lot better than packing a bologna sandwich and I will actually throw the grill right up here on the lid if I don't have a, a, a beach to pull up on or a bank or anything like that I'll just put it right there on the lid and start grilling and it doesn't it doesn't warp the lid it doesn't uh, burn it anything like that which the video of that is actually on my channel if you want to check out how to grill on your kayak it's there the wheels I have are the beach wheels because I tend to uh, be in a lot of sand as you can see by all the sand in my boat I haven't had a chance to clean it out yet I've got some tennis balls on the bottom of it so it doesn't damage the scuffer plug holes. And um, I normally do carry both paddles with me, which that's pretty much how I have them kept whenever I'm out fishing. Just in case the Mirage Drive breaks. These right here are the rod holders that I made for it and I just kind of spray painted it to, to match the boat. Underneath the seat it has these uh, like rubber mats and these Plano boxes I can't remember what series they are but they pretty much fit perfect in there and this is all my saltwater stuff and I just put some grip tape on the bottom of it which is the same thing as um, what you can find on skateboards and even towing this boat down the road and you know hitting potholes or whatever it, it, they, they tend to stay just like that right underneath the seat and the other one, I just carry some weights, jigs, bobbers, hooks, extra fuses for the fish finder, swivels, things like that. That's what I'll uh, stick in there. And I normally do uh, carry a few of these boxes. Um, I just lay them right on top of each other. In here, this compartment, um, these are the boxes that came with the the. Hobie whenever I bought it. Just keep some lures in there. Some uh, some soft plastics right in there. And over there in that compartment, which would actually be this, I carry these three things. Scissors, needle nose, plier, needle -nose pliers, and a measuring tape. I actually used to have a measuring board, but uh, it's kind of at the bottom of the Chesapeake Bay right now, so I don't really feel like diving 30 feet down to go get it. And this is my safety flag that I just made out of a old hunting vest and a broken rod. Just something that I came up with. Um, 
And you know, if there's a lot of boat traffic, I'll whip it out. Or if there's a lot of, uh, you know, shotguns going off during hunting season, I will definitely whip it out. But for the most part, it kind of just stays right there. Um, the fish finder I have is a Lowrance Hook 5. And, um, you know, I really like it. It's pretty nice. Right here on the side is how I hang my rods. And I know this is, I know this is sideways, obviously. Um, whenever it's hanging down or actually inside the boat, it's just kind of... Um, you kind of, I kind of have to fumble around with it to actually be able to get the rods in and out. So laying it on its side like this, which that's actually loose, and you tighten that up. Laying it down on, on its side like this is um, is a lot easier to to get the rods in and out. And uh, the only downside is um, you can only carry two because this third hook back here, uh, the handle's actually in the way. Which I could always take that off if I wanted to, but I like it on there, so it'll stay. And inside this front compartment, I just have a rope with a handle on there just in case I'm happen, I happen to be at a, uh, a boat dock where I can pull, pull the boat up on shore. Sunglasses, that's a must. Life jacket, also a must. Bug spray. Uh, grill lighter, suntan lotion, this is a head strap for the GoPro that I'm actually using right now, um, and this is a headlamp that you can strap to your head, and this is a really good thing to have because there has been plenty of times where I have misjudged the sun going down, and um, I ended up going back to the truck at night, which um, I also use this for night fishing also, and it in that little box right there, it uh, it holds three AA batteries. I got some more gulp and power bait in here. Some hand warmers because it is winter time. This is actually a uh, portable battery charger. I can charge up my cell phone and GoPro at the same time. It does pretty good. Gloves. And this is actually a non-stick mat, or a non-slip mat. Um, and this is what I use for grilling, which that pretty much stays right in there all, at all times. And underneath this, these are my wires for the fish finder. Um, sea sponge, just in case I develop a leak, I can grab this and get some of the water out. And, you know, this thing weighs absolutely nothing, so it's always a good thing to have. And it'll actually soak up a good amount of water. As far as the battery for the fish finder, um, I actually take a battery out of my one of my zero-turn lawnmowers, and uh, I use that. And I know it's not a deep-cycle battery by any means, but, um, you know, it, uh, it'll last, whoops, it'll last all day long. And, um, you know, it doesn't really drain a whole lot of power from the battery. So that's what I use. And I normally just, uh, because there's plenty of rim in here and I don't really carry a whole lot of other stuff, I normally just put the battery right there and just hang the wires, bring them right over. And that's how I do that. So, um, oh, and in this pocket right here, I uh, carry a fish fishing string that I made and I normally for the rest of the space I normally put trash in here like broken fishing line or plastic bags or whatever so that's pretty much how I have it set up for fishing now I'll go ahead and show you the crabbing version alright so this is the crabbing setup and as you can see there's a lot more going on but this is a really simple thing to do and it's a lot of fun so if you like to eat blue crab, um, this is a definitely cheaper way to get them than paying a hundred bucks for a bushel, or actually not even a bushel. I think think they're more more than a hundred bucks for that. But these are the crab pots that I use, and I do use two of them. Now, I can only vouch for Virginia. You know, if you're doing this, make sure you check your state laws. But as far as the 2017 season crabbing season was concerned, 
you are allowed to use two crab pots without a license but if you want to use a 300 foot trot line which is what it's in that bucket right there you do need a license and that license is only 10 bucks for the 300 foot trot line if you want to run more than two crab pots which you know 90 percent of the crabs you're going to keep anyway is going to be from the trot line not the crab pots um, if you do want to run more more crab pots than two I think the limit is five for recreational any more than five you have to get a commercial license but uh, these crab pots are perfect for kayaks as you can see it's got a little door right here to get the crabs out make sure you bungee it so they don't escape it's got two entrances one on each side this black thing is actually a bait door that's where you stick your bait in and uh, whenever you put this in the water it actually it's supposed to sit just like that right on the ocean floor or river, bay, wherever you're at. Now, since the crab pot, I actually carry it out in the water like this. Um, you know, and it's always potential that it could fall out like this if I'm in choppy water. What I'll actually do is have my buoy, which in Virginia you do need your initials on your buoy. Um, I'll just have my buoy sitting right here in the corner just in case it falls out. I can go back and get it but I normally I normally put this uh, pretty close to the truck you know as soon as I get out to, to 10 13 feet of water sometimes deeper I'll just go ahead and throw them throw them out there now this is the trot line itself as you can see it's pretty pretty nasty and dirty I need to uh, to clean this line but I'm just going to use this buoy as an example. Um, the first thing you do, in case you don't know how to do this, is take your weight, which I'm using an 8 pound weight. Next year I'll probably switch to a 4 pound. Just drop that right on in the water. And this line actually runs up to your buoy, which I have a white gallon jug. And uh, th th this line that's wrapped around the buoy is actually connected to a chain. Now the chain would be sitting on the bottom of the river floor or wherever you're at. And what you would do, now this is actually the trot line itself right here. So you would take this brass clip, clip it to the chain. And this is your bait uh, it's called a snowed, which is actually a slip knot. You put your bait in here, and I can't do this with one hand, but you would tighten it up. You would just basically pull pull this piece right here to tighten your bait, chicken or fish or whatever you're using. And uh, that's how you bait your line. And this is a 300 foot trot line, and I have a total of 45 snowds on here out of 300 feet. And it's roughly about five to six feet apart. Um, in Virginia, unfortunately, you can't have anything longer than a 300 foot trot line for recreational use. I would have to get a commercial license to, to get a longer one. So it is what it is, but um, for, for a kayak, 300 feet is just fine for me. Now, this is the crab net that I made. It's actually just an old fishing net that was ripped up and um, this thing actually floats in the water so in case I drop it it will, it will float I just attach some chicken wire to it and that's how I scoop my crabs up now the trot line I will either bait the night before or or either out on the water and what I'll do is I'll just sling the the rope right over top of this and I'll just string it out and um, if your line is baited you have to do it slow so it doesn't get tangled and if it's not baited you don't have to um, do it as slow you can go kind of fast and it'll string out pretty quick the only downside is you have to go back and rebait your line so that is that part now this rig right here um, I'm just utilizing the rod holders as you can see um, this whole thing is one piece it's been uh, cemented together with some PVC, whatever it's called, cement. And uh, you can see it's actually sloped down at an angle. 
and that's to make the line further out so it's rubbing up against here as you can see this whole thing is scraped up from from being run a bunch of times but the line will eventually get down to here further away from the kayak which is actually a good thing because as the line is coming up you don't want the line really close to the boat you want enough room to where you can get your net out and uh and scoop them up which whenever crab season comes again in 2018 which is in like four or five months i'll uh i'll do a video on the whole thing out on the water on how i actually crab from a kayak but this is just to give you a rough idea and this crab pot will actually sit right down in there like in that container until i throw it out and i normally put the crab pots about 50 to 100 yards apart just depends on where i'm at um you know make sure you're in a ideally you want to be in a sandy location you don't want to be in mud you know you don't want to pick up dirty crabs but this is how i have the container rigged up back here as you can see i uh, switched my bungee system to where the container is actually pushing the container against this uh this back bar and when this container is empty and I'm, i actually scoop the crabs up and i'll dump them right in this container and after i'm done running my trot line i will go ahead and i'll measure the crabs and if they're keepers i'll throw them right in here and this is my uh this is my keeper bin which i have drilled a hole in all four corners because you know after some times of the crabs sitting in here you do want to keep your crabs wet so they stay alive so i'll just take an empty gatorade bottle and uh, throughout the day i'll just dump water on them to to make sure they stay alive and this is actually a 31 quart container which is um, i don't have a bushel and the license on my trot line the limit of crabs i can keep for a trot line is, is one bushel a day i believe so this is actually just under a bushel um, just in case the game warden comes and tries to get me he can't and uh, you know once once the once the crabs get up to about halfway um, you know you do want to put your lid on here which which I don't lock it I just I just kind of slide the lid right on there and uh, the crabs they don't push the lid up to get out but I have had them um, actually crawl out of here and dunk themselves back into the water because I've forgotten to uh, to put the lid on, but lucky them, I guess. And uh, here's the paddle. And now the paddle I actually use whenever I've let the trot line sit for a good 10 to 15 minutes. I'll actually come along and I'll hook the line with the end of the paddle right here, which right there has got like a little hook on it. I'll actually hook the line and um, bring it over and slip it into slip it into this rig with with the paddle. So uh, the paddle's definitely good to have, and I normally carry a fishing pole with me because whenever the trot line's sitting, you uh, you let it sit for like 10 to 15 minutes, and I normally just have my uh, net just dangling right off right off the rig right there in the water it's not going to go anywhere so that's about it now one thing that's good um, about having a fish finder is you can tell if you're in a flat bottom or not um, I have actually run into debris like a fallen tree or something and I've gotten my trot line tangled in it on accident so having a fish finder and being able to see if you're on a flat bottom being able to see debris and stuff like that is uh, definitely a good thing to, to have just so you don't um, get your trot line tangled like I did so yeah that's basically it it's pretty simple to do um, any questions about it just ask and I'll help, try to help you out if you want to do this so now I'm gonna switch it over to my trolling motor alright so this is the trolling motor setup and um, I actually found this 55 pound thrust trolling motor on Craigslist for 50 bucks brand new in the box it is a prowler 
it is saltwater rated and um, it was a really good deal so if it wasn't for that I probably would have never have put a trolling motor on my kayak but I do have it hooked up the battery hasn't been charged in a while but uh, you can see whenever I turn it on the voltage will actually drop down and turn it off it'll pop right back up it does have an extendable handle it's got five forward speeds and uh, three reverse and really I just keep this thing straight and I'll actually steer with the uh, the rudder on the on the kayak I rarely actually I rarely ever steer with this and there is the battery for it the battery is kind of big but you know it helps to counterbalance the weight because that trolling motor is not the lightest trolling motor out there and uh, you know it does have some weight to it and having the battery on this side of the kayak helps to counterbalance it and having your gear on this side also helps to counterbalance it so I'll actually take those two rods that you saw in the beginning of the video and attach them off to the side right here and I'll just uh, take my cup holder off and uh, you know the two rods will just hang off to the side and I'll normally just keep all my gear off to the left to help counterbalance it and you know it doesn't it doesn't really lean more to one side than the other than I can tell as long as I have it rigged up like that it seems to do just fine um, one thing I do need to get is a battery box and I have I have taken this thing out like this for about five or six times now and uh, you know it does great it's awesome I'm super happy I, I did this but uh, how I actually have it mounted is this is a 2x6 that I just painted to try and match the boat I'm utilizing the existing rod holders I just cut a hole there and right here slip my rod holder right through and um, that way it won't go anywhere I cut a notch out for these railings and another notch on that side also so I could actually push the board more forward so I could get these holes more centered into the wood and I just took a uh, it might be a little hard to see but I took it's actually a metal bracket right there an L bracket and I just bolted it to uh, another 2x6 there's another bracket right there that's going underneath and then another bracket right there also and it's just uh, it's just bolted up underneath hopefully you can see that the lighting isn't too bad but there you go um, squeeze back over here it does have a light on it which is nice. I haven't uh, been out in the nighttime with it yet, but um, it's definitely nice to have. So that is about it for the for the trolling motor. And uh, you know, it is definitely a leg saver. I will say that. So there you go. That's how I have my Hobie Pro Angler 14 set up. Any questions? Feel free to leave a comment, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And once I clean up this mess, I will show you how I have my Revolution 13 set up. Alright, I'm going to have to do this one on the floor because I don't have extra sawhorses. But this is my Revolution 13. And I will just start up here at the front. Get this Mirage drive out the way. So in here, I normally carry my life jacket. I'll throw it in here if I'm not wearing it. Um, you know, this boat isn't as stable as the Pro Angler. So sometimes I'll wear it, sometimes I won't. Uh, and this contraption right here is just a pool noodle with some extra piping that I had laying around. Just so if I were to put gear in here, stuff doesn't slide inside the hull to where I can't get it. Um, the Mirage Drive does not have turbo fins on it, as you can see. But even without it, this is a very fast kayak. Um, it cuts through the water awesome. Very quick. Right in here, I just keep some soft plastics. This elastic has seen better days, but stays right in there. Over here, measuring tape, needle nose pliers, and on the side right here, I just uh, strap my paddle right there, just in case I need it. In the center compartment, I just keep some lures, which I'm running low on. 
I've had many get stuck in a tree this year. As far as the seat goes, it might look like I'm sitting straight up and down, but once you actually end this and you lean back, it's got a nice comfortable lean to it. And um, this is actually a backrest that I incorporated into the rod holders. Which, that video is on my channel if you want to check it out. It explains that whole thing. But uh, it just makes this kayak so much more comfortable if you're a taller person. And I uh, bungee corded the seat into the crate just so the seat won't flop around whenever you're trying to get in it. Back here is the crate. Um, I have two extra rod holders. And I also just take the safety flag out of this kayak. And I'll stick in one of these uh, extra rod holders normally. And in here I'll just carry some extra lures. Uh, that little, this little tray has some weights, swivels, hooks, jig heads, things like that. And as far as that compartment, I don't keep anything in it. It's just empty. So uh, that's basically it for this one. So if you have any questions about anything you've seen, uh, feel free to leave me a comment. I'll try and get back with you as soon as I can. And on that note, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys on the next one.